Hey guys, welcome back. So I uh, I ran out of time to do some test cutting on the last video. I, I finished up the assembly of the spindle at about 9 o'clock on a Sunday night and I had to leave for a job out of town at about 5.30 in the morning. So sorry, I just didn't have time to put it together. But we're going to do some cutting today. Okay, this is a piece of, I believe, 1045 cold rolled steel. We're going to be running at, it's, a, it's about an inch and, I don't know, inch and three quarters in diameter. So, what, 40 millimeters? And we're going to run uh, 700 RPM. We're going to feed at four thousandths per rev, or one millimeter, uh, with an in-feed, or uh, a cutting depth of 30 thousandths on the diameter, so 0.8 millimeters on the diameter. And uh, this is a Seco insert, it's a WNMG 431. It's a TP3500 grade with an M3 chip breaker. So the chip breaker is not going to work very well at this low depth of cut and low feed, but uh, we'll see how the surface finish comes out. So yeah, the, the result is, it's just a glass smooth finish. It, it looks beautiful. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the results. So uh, the next step is we got to align the headstock. So I'll walk you through how to do that. So here's some more uh, test pieces that I was playing around with. Just making, making various test cuts after I replaced the bearings. So you can see the, the surface finish is pretty good on all of these. Uh, different feeds and speeds, just trying things out, but yeah, I'm real happy, real happy with the way it, it's performing. All right, so the first step towards aligning the headstock is you got to make sure that the bedways are level, and by level I mean just uh, no twist in the bedways. So I've seen people make kind of elaborate, fancy jigs, but what I always do is just level right off the carriage, and you know check it at under the chuck in the middle and at the tailstock end, and you're just looking for no twist. And I set this machine up about a year ago and leveled it then and I just checked it now and it's spot on. So uh, that's important. So the headstock on this machine is actually adjustable and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, if you have an old school American made engine lathe like a Hendy or a Monarch or a Pacemaker, chances are good that your headstock is not adjustable. It, I think it's kind of uniquely American way to build a lathe but they actually made the the headstock fit right onto the ways and they're not adjustable but all of the or almost all of the European and kind of Asian origin machines do have adjustable headstocks so that said uh, the alignment of the headstock really should never change the only thing that can really cause it to change is if someone crashes or overloads the machine the other thing that I see a lot of times too is that people will get a new machine in and find that it cuts a bad taper and usually the reason for that is is that the previous owner did not level the bedways so they didn't take the twist out of the bed and then they compensated for the taper by adjusting the headstock incorrectly so when you 
go ahead and level the ways, then you find out that the thing cuts a terrible taper. Alright, so the first step is we're going to take a test cut on this bar. I just cleaned up the outside diameter, and it's about, I don't know, I'd say like an inch and three quarters diameter by about eight inches stick out. So what's that, 40 millimeter diameter by 200 millimeters long. And I'm just taking a really light cut because we don't want any tool, you know, we don't want any deflection of the bar. So here we go. Okay, so I got 1.6067 at this end, 1.6109 at this end. So it's just over four thousandths bigger at this end. And we would like to get it down to about a half thousandth bigger at this end, if anything. So let's get to it. So there's four, basically, screws that hold the whole headstock down. And the two underneath of the chuck are studs with a big nut on them. And there's two more bolts at the back here. They're actually socket head cap screws that come in from the bottom. But I'm going to loosen this banjo and see if I can move these, these uh, power feed gears out of the way. Okay, so this arrangement here is a push-pull adjustment for aligning the headstock. So you got a block here in the middle and a bolt that pushes this way and a bolt that pushes this way. So that's what we're going to use to rotate the headstock. Alright, so now the question is, how far do we move the headstock and how do we know when we've moved it far enough? And I've seen other videos, like Tom Lipton has a video about aligning the headstock on his lathe and he uses like two indicators and tries to do all the math you'll drive yourself crazy doing that so this is what I use uh, I use a single indicator and then the bar that we set up and cut initially is going to serve as our test bar we haven't taken it out of the chuck we haven't done anything so theoretically it has perfect run out and right now the front side should be perfectly parallel to the bedways now I've checked it and it's already off about a half thousand just from me loosening the bolts on the headstock. So remember we're four thousandths big on this end. So what we want to do in order to compensate for that is we want to push this end towards the operator two thousandths. Remember we're working on the radius so everything will be twice as much on the diameter. So we want to push this end two thousandths relative to this end here which basically is going to stay fixed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the headstock and then check it with my indicator and what I want is to have two thousandths difference from this measurement to this measurement and once I get that close I'll lock the headstock down check it again put everything back together and take another test cut and we should be very very close okay I think I've got it where I want it the uh, alignment has been made and I've bolted it back down secure to the bed so I'll take a sweep with the indicator here and maybe you can see what I'm seeing so right now it's at about plus one thousandth down to minus one so minus one to plus one so that's, that's two thousandths on the radius, which should get us four thousandths on the diameter. So I'm going to put everything back together and we'll take another cut.
Yeah, so that worked out perfectly. I ended up at 1.5939 at the at the chuck end and 1.5940 at the out end, so or one tenth bigger at this end. So now the question is how how close does it need to be? And if you remember from the initial evaluation of the machine, we looked at this book, Testing Machine Tools by Dr. Schlesinger. And if you look in this book, under the category of finishing lathes, you see all these figures, but there's this one here, figure eight, where it shows the dial indicator on a test mandrel and the carriage moving back and forth. And if you go to the spec for figure eight, the one we want is this one here, 8B, work spindle parallel with bed and horizontal plane. And it says zero to two hundredths of a millimeter per 300 millimeters. And it wants the mandrel to be towards the operator at the free end. So if you translate that to inches for us colonials, that is eight tenths per foot. And the test bar is about eight inches long, so that'd be about half a thousandth over the length of the test bar. So zero to a half thousandth, we're at one tenth, so we're right in the right in the sweet spot. All right, so the last note about this alignment: if you're going to align your headstock the way that I've just done it, you also have to align the tailstock. Uh, remember that when you're dealing with machine tools, all the alignments are interrelated. And by adjusting the, the end of this test bar, we have actually adjusted or moved the center of rotation of the spindle ever so slightly, and it will no longer be in alignment with the tailstock. So I'm not going to go over tailstock alignment. It's pretty simple. There's lots of good videos. I know Steve Summers just uploaded a video about uh, doing a tailstock alignment on his Hendy lathe, and that's the same process that I would use. All right, someone asked me how to check the squareness of the cross slide to the bedways. And there's several different ways to do that. The best way probably is with a, a master square. But there is another way. I'll show you real quick. And all you need is a parallel. And this works better with a four jaw chuck, but you can do it with a three jaw chuck. So we're just going to stick this thing in the jaws. like so okay so you see I'm about right now I'm about four thousandths minus so we'll rotate the chuck 180 degrees and you see I'm about six thousandths plus so we need to get those the same Okay, so we're about one plus. And zero. All right, I think we got it. Okay, so now we know the parallel is square to the axis of the spindle, the center line of the spindle. So now we can use it to test the squareness of the cross slide. So it's really not that bad. Looks like it goes from about, I don't know, zero to one thou. Yeah, up to about two thousandths over six inches. Uh, but the real problem is going to be the wear in the slide. So it's kind of hard to check it when it's this badly worn. But that would be the process. So in the book, the spec for the squareness of the cross slide is covered by figure 15 and they describe it as lathe faces hollow or concave only within two hundredths of a millimeter per three hundred millimeters so that's again eight tenths per foot so that means that on my setup the cross slide should be square within four tenths over the length of this six inch parallel and uh, like I said, I don't really know what it is because the cross slide is so badly worn. 
And the other caution that I'll give you, you can't use this test unless you know that your spindle is aligned to the ways, the alignment that we just did with the headstock. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, as a quick follow-up to the spindle bearings, there's there's no complicated run-in procedure for these bearings because they're they're oil bath bearings. If these were grease-packed bearings, you know we would have to go through a, a pretty complex ramp-up procedure to make sure that we uh, get the grease distributed correctly inside the bearings. But since these are oil lubed, it's not that big of a deal. All I really did was just run it for I don't know four hours, something like that. I had a variety of RPMs and just checked the temperature and everything was good. I re-double checked the preload. Everything seems to be fine. So yeah, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It, you know, those bearings are expensive, but that's the heart of the machine. So if you don't have good spindle bearings, you, you just can't make good parts. Uh, so then as far as the next step for this machine, we still need to definitely address the wear in the cross slide. That's a big issue. And I need to make a, a sled to check the alignment of the bedways. So that'll probably be the next video. I've already started it. I just need to finish it up. And then we'll get started on rescraping the cross slide and possibly scraping the bedways. And then I want to pull the apron apart and check that power feed clutch. Something's wrong there. Okay guys, I'll see you on the next video. The channel continues to, to grow in subscribers and viewers, so it's pretty encouraging. I'm going to keep, uh, try to keep uploading content like this, you know, as long as people are interested.